What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We're in North Carolina at Social Status with Senator and Democratic nominee for Vice President Kamala Harris. How you doing? Hey, Joe. Going to do some sneaker shopping today. Going to see what she's feeling, what she's not, and then hopefully she's going to buy some sneakers. Let's go. Let's go. Senator Harris, let's start early beginnings. Yeah. Howard University, I heard your crew very fashion forward. Sonia Lockett said that <laughs> it was no it was no sweatpants going to 8 a.m. class. You guys always made sure that the style was on point. What yeah. were like the footwear choices back then? Let's see. I, a lot of heels. Sandals. I mean, very rarely were we wearing tennis shoes for gym, but that it was literally. It, like on Fridays, mm -hmm. Fridays was dress up Friday. We never dressed down. We dressed up on Friday. Got it. To walk the yard and, you know, I mean, and in between that, we were going and we were protesting apartheid on, on Capitol Hill. We were doing just a little bit of everything. And now, of course, last month you get off the plane. A silhouette that everyone wears every single day for years, but it garnered so much attention. Why do you think that was? The Converse Chuck Taylor. I love my Chucks. I love my Chucks. You know, I think it's, maybe people don't expect it, but I think it's also, I think it's a statement about who we really are. Like everybody's got their inner kind of Chuck look, right? <laughs> and I think it just has to do with the fact that we all want to go back to some basic stuff about who we are as a country, right? I mean, Chucks, it's like we all, whatever your background, whatever language your grandmother spoke, you know, we all at some point or another had our Chucks, right? Absolutely. <laughs> You know, brands like Nike are supporting frontline workers. They're donating footwear and apparel, yeah. over 150,000 pieces. What could big brands do more for the frontline workers during the pandemic, especially? Well, there's a lot. Look, I mean, one of the things is this pandemic has been an accelerator in many ways, meaning it has really magnified what was wrong even before the pandemic. So what I'd like to see is all businesses talk about the need for universal coverage in terms of sick leave. All workers mm -hmm. should have paid sick leave. Mm -hmm. Paid family leave. Definitely. So it's that. It's about saying, OK, we want them to be safe in the workplace. So let's make sure everybody has PPEs. Let's make sure, you know, Joe and I, part of our plan is to give grants to small businesses as they start to reopen, knowing that so many small businesses barely can cover their overhead, but they're gonna need to do things in the interim to, to reopen, like maybe plexiglass barriers, yes. things like that, right? Definitely. Paying for PPEs for their employees, that can get expensive. So we're gonna provide grants to help small businesses do that kind of thing, knowing that's a real expense that they may not be able to afford as they're trying to reopen. And I love that because you met James Whitner. We're gonna bring him yeah. in later. Yeah. You guys putting forth that plan will help support someone like James, an owner of 22 businesses who is such a success story. But see, and here's the thing about James. James is a role model in many ways of what we're talking about, in particular in supporting small and minority owned businesses. They are part of the lifeblood of their communities. They're part of the economic lifeblood of their communities. That our small business owners in our communities are also civic leaders, not just business leaders. They hire locally, they mentor the local kids, right? Mm -hmm. And they have suffered the greatest, frankly, in this pandemic, which shows again what we need to do to support our small and minority owned businesses. Part of what Joe and I are saying is we're gonna intentionally focus on minority owned businesses around getting low interest loans and access to capital. Yes. So they can grow like what James has done, mm -hmm. right? Grow the business and also for those who are just starting up, because we don't lack for creative ideas. We don't lack for innovation. Right. We lack for access to capital. So Makes increasing sense. access to capital so people can grow a business like James has done. I mean, look at what he's look done. At, look at how beautiful. It's incredible. One thing I have to ask, when the shoes went viral. Did Joe notice? Did is are we stepping? <laughs> you know, are we stepping the former vice president's sneaker game up? Maybe. You know, I mean, Joe's got his aviators, right? Okay, that's a good step. <laughs> we'll start at the top and then we work down. Yeah, yeah. Joe's got a good look. He's yeah. got a really good look. <laughs> um, <laughs> November 2019, you try to enter the Senate floor. You have sneakers, and they made you go to the cloakroom. If you cannot, one is not supposed to wear sneakers on the floor of the Senate. Okay. It's still there, and. Um, Biden, Harris, White House, though, maybe the dress codes <laughs> loosen up a little. Look, at you, you know, we're in 2020 now. Yeah. Is there a chance that maybe it loosens I up? I think there is. OK, love that. I, but, but here's the thing. It's not about loosening up, right? It's about lacing up. Exactly. You know See? what I'm saying?
in my years, I've seen a lot of sneakers. One that I have not seen yet until this day, these special makeups that our friend James Whitner, who is right here, yes. put together with the designer Nina Chanel. You look in the details, there's different pins, 2020 encouraging the vote. James, how did this project come together? Listen, it was it was really inspired by uh, Senator Harris. Like, okay. We, 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 we heard the news that she was coming our way and we really, really wanted to do something exciting. So I hit Nina Chanel and this is just classic Nina, right? Your thoughts align. These are all the things that are important to her. They're also important to you and us. Listen, everything is on the line in 2020. And instead of hating the situation, I love how she has a heart here, right? Like, let's just understand that motivated by love, we can actually be active and change what needs to get done, yes. right? Yes. And then all these buttons, vote, 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 the Black Lives Matter. Around LGBTQ, love. LGBTQ, yes. equality, black joy. I always say, look, we need to be joyful warriors in our fight for equality, yes. in our fight for fairness, right? Yes. But we can be joyful. We know how to work hard to get what we need to get done. And I also find time to dance a little. Yeah. And sing a little and we, saw you, yeah we saw you yesterday. Yes. We saw you yesterday in the yes. Taylors. Yes. 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 yes, absolutely. Yes. There's some HBCU plan for these, perhaps? That is the plan. Okay. The plan is to support local HBCUs. As a business, our goal is not about commerce. This is this is secondary. It's about connectivity to black culture and uplifting and mentoring and just participating in, in historically black colleges and university. All of these shoes will go to uh, local Johnson C. Smith, our local HBCU. That's that. so fantastic. Listen, yes. I'm a proud graduate of an HBCU. HBCUs have produced the majority of our professionals who go on in every subject to become national and international leaders. In fact, Joe and I were committed to putting $70 billion into HBCUs to help them grow and to help them nurture all these bright minds. And it's so important that we recognize the historical significance of our HBCUs and the role that they play right now. So this is fantastic. Thank you. No, it's I mean, fantastic. you inspired it, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would ask you, Senator Harris, there's going to be a lot of 18-year-old sneakerheads who watch this, who are on the fence of voting for the first time. Yeah. What do you say to them to get out and vote this election? Don't let anybody take your power from you. Your vote is an expression of your power. It's an expression of your voice. I feel so strongly. I don't want us to win this election without you. I want you to be a part of this. I want us to walk into that White House with Joe together. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then get in there and say, okay, and now we're all at the table and let's talk about what we need to get done, making sure that each voice is heard around what we need. So let's all be a part of this. Let's not let it happen without us. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And never let anybody take your power from you. James and I were talking about that. Yeah. Never let anybody take your power from you. And part of the power you have, especially at election time, is your vote. Absolutely. Last question. If you win, will you look back? You know, sometimes we, James, you know, we yeah. have sentimental sneakers that <laughs> for big life yeah. events, yeah. will there be a sentimental pair of sneakers for you, Senator Harris? Well, it'll be one of my checks. Okay. <laughs> it may be this one. Perfect. <laughs> well, we talked about everything now. It's the easy part. Browse the shelves, see what you're gonna buy. Okay. Let's do I it. I have an idea. These are about to be mine. <laughs> All the shoes will be going to Johnson C. Smith University, a local HBCU here in Charlotte, specifically to Dr. King's class. He teaches soul food. It's a class on sneaker culture. Senator Harris, thanks so much for taking the time. An honor to shoot with you. Joe, it's great to be with you. Make sure everyone votes November 3rd. Get out and vote. Go to IWillVote.com and vote early.